this is this is this is I know I know you're a fairly young man, yeah, but this is theology 101. The Trinity suggests that Jesus the three distinct persons in this Godhead. Jesus being that he is eternally begotten. Now the spirit, he is eternally proceeded. What does that even mean? What does proceeded mean? We have to ask ourselves, what do, if we don't find these terms in the Bible, the very least we can do is ask what these terms mean. What does eternally proceeded mean? Because there's a difference in the churches. One say he proceeded only from the Father. The other church says he proceeded from the Father and the Son to visit. You have to have equality. So they say, no, the procession of the Spirit comes from Jesus Which and the, the Father, Spirit. the Holy Spirit. What does proceeded mean? This is not seen. Do you see this? How can something eternally proceed? How can it eternally be gotten? It proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the daughter of God. Yeah, it proceeds from the Father and the Son. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. what does proceed mean? And how does that make him equal? So we move to other aspects. As again, I'm not trying to humiliate all this and that. Yeah, we have to ask ourselves these questions. Yeah. All of the prophets came with the message of one God. Yeah? yeah, Allah says in the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad, which you know is like as in we as Muslims believe is the last of prophets. In the ilayka kama awhayna ila nuh wa nabiina min ba'dihi, we reveal unto you, O Prophet Muhammad, in the same way that we revealed unto Noah, Nuh, unto Noah, and the messengers who came after. And what was their message? What was Jesus' message? That you should worship me? No, you should worship only God. Your God and my God. So ask yourself as a Catholic or any other person, it doesn't have to be you. Why do we find ourselves worshipping men, spirits, sticks and stones? Well, we don't worship the human nature of God. We worship the divine nature of Jesus. Of Jesus. Did Jesus say to worship me in any form? Not explicitly. What even implicit? Like if God came down to earth, you'd think he'd be explicit with his message, right? After all these thousands of years, he said, follow me. All of the prophets said, follow me. Also, you know, in Islam, we say you have the Prophet Muhammad say, follow me. If you love Allah, follow me and Allah will love you. Follow his ways and then you will get Allah will love you. And what are the ways of the Anbiya or the prophets that you should worship only one? God. Ask yourself why you find yourself worshiping a man yeah, who did not say worship me. Even in the most flexible of language, you might struggle, but you could might be able to but say... at no point do we say that we worship Jesus the man. No, but you worship Jesus who was a man. We worship the Son Jesus. of man. Yeah, and that's still paradoxical. It's against the message of the Shema, who say you should worship only God. You must have asked yourself these questions before. Yeah. Because it sounds like you studied a bit of theology. Which are quite, either quite hard to answer or we don't really have answers for because they're Or mystery. could be that it's a mystery. That's a great escape, escape route. Just simply saying it's a mystery. Jesus says, yeah, um, we'll focus on the death of a person on the tree is the death of her. Curse. The crucifix is the death of the curse. If you believe that God died for your sins, which you say, you believe God died as a curse. How can God be a curse? Curse to whom? Look what Islam says, uh, Allah is blessed, blessed is he, in whose hand is the dominion. We say that you should worship only one God, he is alive, he never dies. How can you worship a thing or a person you know, that dies, who eats like you and I eat, who even said worship only God Almighty, do not worship me, why thou callest me good? was incarnate in human form, who then died in human form. Where's okay, it? where do you get that from? Like John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was the Word of God, and the Word became flesh. That's what you're alluding yeah. to? Who wrote that? Have you never questioned yourself? When did Jesus die, and when was John written, and where was John written? Was it, around was a year. Seven, seven, somewhere around 70 or somewhere around So you, you have some basic, this actually written in the 19th century to the 100th century in Ephesus, John. If Jesus said worship, if century. Uh, first century, <laughs> <laughs> so no, one hundred eighty six. Jesus never said, "I am the Word." Like, but, let's, word but let's say, like, like he did, for example, hypothetically, say that in John. Ask yourself: If John is the last of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, John is the last of the four to be written. Why does Mark, which is the earliest, written in forty A.D., not mention this? Why does Matthew and Luke? 
not mention this. Why do they all? If he, if God came well, to the earth, were apostles of Paul. Yeah. Matthew was. Matthew I don't know about Mark. Yeah. By Matthew. Yeah, they're, they're, it's a synoptic problem. This is a bit deeper. Well, Matthew and Luke is based upon Mark, but I'm not getting into that. Problem is here now, we have the statement which you used to say that God came down, incarnated. In the beginning was the Word, the Word became flesh. Yeah? That comes only in John. And it only comes in the first fragment, first part of John. In the rest of John, it's not mentioned. In the, John mentions at the end, like as in, these things are written that you may know that Jesus is God. No. That's a great place to conclude something like that, but he doesn't do that. It's only in the beginning, which leads some scholars to believe that the beginning of John is not the original. Yeah, it's interpolated. It's interpolated. Because the language, in the language itself, you only see Logos appear in the beginning. And Logos is a Greek idea that came before. It does not exist within Jesus' community. Anyway, so John comes later, years later, after Matthew, Mark, uh, Matthew, Luke and Mark, yeah? And he starts talking like this. But none of them have recorded this. Why? Does it, if Jesus came to earth and said, I am God, you'd expect Mark to record it, the first writer. If not Mark, Matthew and Luke, the second writers. If they don't record it, how, how on earth is a much later record in John, which is written in year 90 in Ephesus, how does he record it? Because the Christology was being formed at the time it's of John. Been deformed. And where was it written? John was written in a city known as Ephesus. Ephesus. Uh, Ephesus. And you know Ephesus? The Mission was the emperor. And you know what? So, what so the Epistle of Paul? The, the earliest piece from the Epistle yeah, of Paul, Paul is from 50 AD. Great. So Paul was one of the first evangelists. But he was not commissioned by Jesus. Which is a different topic. Yes, you didn't think it. the earliest writings which Paul wrote <laughs> were not written by Paul. He never met Jesus. Disciple. He yeah. said he saw a vision. No, yeah, he saw a vision. He he yeah, a vision yeah. Jesus. But then he goes against all of the disciples to a point that the council Acts. of uh, yeah, in uh, the council of Jerusalem, he was summoned by James, the elder leader of the companion's disciple. Because he was teaching them not to follow the law, not to follow circumcision. This stuff wasn't important. No, Peter, but the companion. Peter said that he. That according he to who? According, according to, to who? Acts. According to Acts. And who? When was Acts written? And who wrote it? And who wrote it? Did Jesus himself get circumcised? Answer is yes. In Luke chapter two, verse twenty-one. Not circumcised. So why is it that someone else who's never met Jesus, who's gone on a journey, he was apparently killing Jews, uh, the Christians who followed, sorry, Jews that followed Jesus, because they weren't called Christians. These were Jews who kept the law, the Sabbath, everything, yeah, and they were following the belief that Jesus was a prophet. Must these are the first. Jews. These are the first, and we must not be anachronistic and call them Christians. These are either we call them Jewish Christians or, or there are many or names, yeah, Jews, or Messiah Jews. Yeah, slightly different because there's a new definition of that. Yeah, but these people held on to the law, and then Paul, he was well, they, persecuted. Were they led by Peter? Sorry, there was three of them, but they were led by James. Yeah. And how do we know that? In the Council of Jerusalem, he's the one that headed that. And this is how scholars infer by looking in Acts as well as the other uh, uh, writings here, yeah, that James was the leader of the church. And what does James in the epistle, epistle of James it says? That you know God is one, good. And he says, and you know, if you read James, you see this argument against the idea of leaving uh, the laws. Read it. He said, what good is it for you to believe God is one, even the devil believes? You know, and then he goes on to talk about this faith without works. It seems like he's repudiating someone. But who is he repudiating? In the life of James, you can see that he came into argument with one person. Oh, oh, yes, he is. Yeah. Oh, yes, he is. No, he is oh, yeah, absolute yeah, he is. You have to look at the context because, mm. in the mm. context, James was talking to the Jews, mm. and for Paul, Paul was talking to the Gentiles. And who sent Paul? No. Who speak sent Paul? Speak no one sent Paul. Paul commissioned Jesus himself. No, he never met Jesus in person. He claims that he saw him in a vision on the road, on the road to Damascus after persecuting the Jews. Uh, sorry, the Jewish Christians, the ones that believed in Jews. He was one of the first persecutors of Christians or Jewish uh, believers of Christ. And then afterwards, he dramatically fell off his horse and he said that he had a vision. And then afterwards, his teaching is completely different 
from that. He mm. calls them, oh, don't worry about them saying those super apostles. Mm. He even calls them dogs. Yeah. You can check it. He yeah. refers to the real apostles. Sure. Yes, yeah, sure. It's good you ask this one. In Matthew chapter 15. You, 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 you know Paul. Oh, this is Rayhan, mashallah. Yeah, it's good, mashallah. Yeah, good. How are you? Look, this computer. Do you know what? Do you know why he no, went no. into Judaism? Look, Paul, and he calls him loads of names. He wanted a Jewish girl. There was a specific Jewish girl that he wanted. So he went through all the circumcision and all that kind of lovely stuff, mm. and she rejected him. Yeah, she rejected him. Okay, so uh, again, which is why he went heavy into the whole Christian thing. So in the second Corinthians, himself. second Corinthians eleven five, Paul, Paul, Paul called them Paul, Paul, Paul called them super Noah. super apostles. Yeah, let me see where he calls them dogs. Yeah, he's just also called the Gentiles dogs. Look, yeah, the Gentiles, the, the Samaritan woman, which makes you think: Why is it that he called them that? I'll get that on to that because, because it, when he came, he was speaking directly to the Jews before, before what? his crucifixion and resurrection. And then and after, after that, yeah? he appointed the apostles to go out according to who? We'll get on to that topic. He said, he said imagine, we'll get on to that topic. He did a pretty boss move okay. where he Watch out for those Philippians. What's that say? Watch out for those dogs well, whose workers of evil, those mutilators of flesh. He calls circumcision, which is an everlasting covenant, yeah. covenant between uh, believers and Abraham, yeah? Or Abraham, the house of Abraham yeah. and, and God, Peter, yeah? But he council. calls it, look what Paul calls it, mutilators of flesh. And yeah. only that he refers to those who do it, yeah, and this is talking about a group, yeah, yeah, you can check it all the time, yeah, don't, listen, don't just take anything I say on face value, yeah, go this, home. Do you understand that this is after the after, after council of what? This, this verse. That's the point. That's yeah. the point. Yeah, which, so, is, which so, is after the apostles came in agreement with him that circumcision no, no, Okay, no, 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 no. no. So no. now this is it. Now this is it. Did they agree? Yeah, so did they actually agree with him? Now scholars actually look at this, the Council of Jerusalem, and they notice that the language isn't unlike language. Yeah, the language is, what language James has spoken, for example. This is one of the evidence where scholars yeah, disagree. Yeah, yeah? yeah, he was Jewish, but what language was he likely to have spoken? Syriac. Yeah, it could be Syriac, it could be Aramaic, it could be something like a, you know, a local language. Unlikely to be Greek. But when you look at what James is speaking, and it's Greek. So it's unlikely, the words that you find there in the Acts or Galatians, yeah, that this, these are the statements of James, and scholars speak about this. Why would he agree with him and thereafter send people to check on Paul? And this is what we have in Paul. Uh, he say, if by my lie the truth is bounded. Who is calling him a liar? He wouldn't say if so James but, sent people to check on okay. what Paul is doing. Yeah, that so you before. throughout the theme of all of Paul's letters, you will see that the people that he's proselytizing to leave him. And he keeps right. saying, why do you leave what I'm teaching? There is no other gospel for you. Yeah. Indicating they're leaving to Wait, go who to... Is leaving? Hmm? Who is leaving? The followers of Paul, because Paul set up the different churches around the kingdom. Yeah? Yeah. Now what happened, these churches, he keeps writing to them. And he's saying, why are you leaving my gospel? And I'll show you. Um, so, so uh, any, anything you have questions on, tell me, I'm going to uh, find it. Yeah? So, um, so in the Council of Jerusalem, the edict by James was that Gentiles who come into Christianity don't need to be circumcised. Oh, my hands are frozen. Jews who come into Christianity need, still need to be circumcised. And there's certain dietary laws of fornication. Okay? But then after that, as the brother read in, I think, Corinthians, after that, and then, and then, and then after that, they, they gave, during the council, they gave him a letter, and Peter uh, went with him, and Barnabas, and, and Judas, and other Judas, and they, and, and they went to Antioch, with the letter signed by James, that this ed the edict is from James. And then also, Paul took the Nazarite vow, shaved his head, burnt off uh -huh. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so, so this vow, as in, as in um, why did he take this vow? Did you, are you aware of this vow that he took the shaving of the head and offering of fire sacrifices? Which show even after the death of Jesus, they're still doing sacrifices, which make no sense in your theology. But do you understand why he shaved his hair and done these sacrifices according to Acts? Because James made him do it, showing that James is the leader. Now, why did James make him do it? No, 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 no. Church of Rome, Rome, which came Rome, Rome. 
if, and I'll get onto that point of James. If you read Epiphanes or in, any of in the... In fact, yeah. it's Peter who makes the statement saying, look at the miracles which these yeah. guys have been yeah. performing. Who led the in, council of in, Jerusalem? In Jesus' name. Who led the council? Who convened the council of Jerusalem? Yeah, but it's who, who spoke, who had, who had James. James. Well. James. 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 It was Peter who spoke. No. Peter is a spoke. pillar of the church. And he was, he was appointed, he's seen that in Rome. Why Rome? Afterwards. This is another interesting. Remember, these are Gentiles, meaning that they're not originally Jewish people. Yeah. Jesus didn't come for the Gentiles. He said that himself. This is something that came afterwards. And then he told Paul, them to go forth no. Spreading, yeah. spreading well, did he? Did he really? Did yeah. he really? Well, it comes at the end of Mark. Mark was the addition. There are some other verses which alluded yeah, there, but scholars doubt these statements. And I, I can, I can uh, give you this. So, so let's, yeah? let's make it for, for example, let's, let's they, they asked him. Before we go first. Yeah. If I quote something or you quote something yeah. from any of the Gospels, mm -hmm. is there going to be a fallback of, of those, those are inconclusive, those, those are... No, no, you could go home, yeah. it's, it's recorded on these channels, so if I check quote everything. Something, yeah. There's not, because you just refuted based on, well, Mark is a little bit... Yeah. No, 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 the ending of Mark. Mark, yeah, the ending of Mark. So this is the addition. I'm not, this is why I'm saying you have to know what your sources are. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Previously we spoke about John. Mark is supposed to be the earliest one, yeah? Mark is written around 40 AD. It's written by someone who's non-Jewish or at least to a non-Jewish uh, audience. How do we know that? It breaks down basic Jewish terms like rabbi, which means teacher. If I'm speaking to a Jewish person, I wouldn't need to do that. From that, scholars infer that the audience here is not a Jewish one. It's at most, it's a gentle one. He doesn't know the geography of the area etc yeah this is how scholars understand the reading of mark yeah and then mark the ending of it because was mark, it mark was an apostle of four. Uh, yeah, mark no, <laughs> you have to you have to you have to you have to check everything you've been taught yeah. by yourself don't listen to hamza yeah. don't listen to the rayhan or this person exactly. this is you you're going to be dealing with it yeah, and I didn't even need to go, mean to go into the technicals because really just the broad things is enough and suffice for you.